Hello students, today's topic is blastulation in frog. Formation of blastula is called blastulation. As a result of repeated cleavages, a solid ball of blastomeres called morula is produced. There students, do you know what you mean by cleavages? Cleavages means the series of repeated mitotic divisions occurring in zygote <coughs> after fertilization. Later on, these blastomeres arrange themselves on the periphery of the cleaving egg, leading to the formation of a fluid-filled cavity called blastocyl. This structure is known as blastula, and the process of formation of blastula is known as blastulation. Now let us come to the detailed formation of blastula. We all know that all developments start from a single cell fertilized egg called zygote. The cleavage of the zygote of frog is of holoblastic and the unequal type. Holoblastic means when the cleavage furrow divides the cell completely, this type of cleavage is known as holoblastic cleavage. The first cleavage of the zygote starts about two and a half hours after fertilization in frog. The first cleavage plane is meridional and divides the egg through its median animal, vegetal, polar axis and the results in the formation of two equal sized blastomeres. The second set of cleavage divisions is also holoblastic, equal and the meridional, but at right angles to the first plane. Mm -hmm. But the egg of frog is of telolacetal type and contains much yolk, which is concentrated in the vegetal hemisphere. Therefore, the third set of divisions due to unequal distribution of yolk, the mitotic spindles are oriented parallel to the equator towards the animal pole. The four blastomeres not only cliff latitudinally but also unequally. Thus, the eight cell stage consists of four small size yolk pore animal cells, the micromeres, and the four large size yolk wrist cells, the macromeres. The four set of plane, cleavage planes are meridional, holoblastic, but unequal. They divide the yolk pore micromeres more rapidly than the yolk rich micromeres. The micromeres divide rapidly due to the fact that they are free from the burden of cleaving through a yolk dense region. The macromeres divide slowly since their cytoplasm is loaded with yolk throughout. At the end of fourth set of cleavages, 16 cell stage is formed. From this stage onwards, the whole embryo acquires a characteristic appearance resembling of a mulberry and so it is called morula. It is about the fourth and the fifth cleavage stages that a small space, the blastocyl, appears between the blastomeres of morula. Morula is a solid ball of cells before the formation of blastocyl. But in frog embryo, as early as eight cell stays, a pre-filled space, that is blastocyl, appears and gradually increases corresponding to the increase in the number of blastomeres. So the existence of a Morula stage in frog is debatable till now. The blastocylic space first appears as narrow space between the blastomeres at an early stage of cleavage. 
This cavity enlarges during subsequent cleavages and become blastocyst. Meanwhile, the blastocyst becomes infiltrated by water and the albuminous fluid of active mucopolysaccharides secreted by the surrounding blastomeres. Thus, the blastocyst enlarges throughout the early development due to an ion pump present in the internal membranes of the blastomeres of the embryo. But in frog embryo, as early as eight cell stage, a fluid filled space, that is blastocyst, appears and gradually increases corresponding to the increase in the number of blastomeres. Thus, the appearance of blastocyst as early as eight cell in the embryo frog is debatable till now. The amount of yolk in the vegetal hemisphere has resulted in the obstruction of cleavage and the displacement of all the horizontal cleavage divisions towards the animal pole. The overall result of the developmental modifications is the formation of a blastula with an eccentric blastocyst. As cleavage process, the adhesion of blastomeres to each other increases and they arrange in a true epithelium called blastoderm. This blastoderm remains to cell check towards the animal pole of the egg and forms a sort of root of the blastocyst. The sites and the floor of blastocyst are occupied by multi-layer blastoderm of large yolky macromeres. The resultant embryo having fluid filled blastocyst and the blastoderm is blastula of frog. This type of blastula is called MP blastula or MP blastian. And the whole process of blastula formation is blastulation. The blastocyst of blastula probably serves two major functions. Number one is a cavity that permits cell migration during gastration. Number two, to prevent the cells beneath it from interacting prematurely with the cells above it. In the later development, the blastomeres in the animal pole divide more rapidly than those in the vegetal pole and overgrow the yolk cells. As a result of this, blastomeres in the equatorial region of the late blastula become very active and they divide very rapidly. These are the blastomeres which reach the equatorial region by, by the process of overgrowth and the continues during gasulation also. These actively multiplying blastomeres are located in the region of the late blastula where gray crescent was originally found. Do you know what do you mean by a gray crescent? It is a crescent shaped gray color area developing opposite to the point of sperm entry in the egg of amphibia. It is developed due to the cytoplasmic movements caused by the entry of the sperm to the cytoplasm of the egg. The blastomeres in this region of gray crescent and the its neighborhood are much more active and divide more rapidly than others and it is in this region that the process of gasulation begins subsequently. In the blastula, the blastomeres which have to form different germinal layers 
and the different organs of the adult frog that have their presentation at the external surface of the blastula. According to the FED map studies, the whole surface of the blastula of frog can be divided into the following three areas. Do you know what do you mean by FED map studies? FED maps are surface or topographical mappings on the surface of the blastula of any animal so that the fat of each cell of blastula can be determined. So number one is prospective ectoderm area. The entire pigmented area on and around the animal pole is the prospective ectoderm. The neural ectoderm which develops into the central nervous system occurs largely on the fusor dorsal side of the blastula while the epidermal ectoderm which develops into the epidermis of skin of the embryo occupies the anteroventral side of the blastula. Number two, prospective notochord and the mesoderm area. The pigmented animal hemisphere is followed by a crescentic area of gray color. The marginal zone which goes all along the equator of the blastula and the has blastomeres for the formation of notochord and the mesoderm. Number third, prospective endodermal area. The entire non-pigmented area on and around the vegetal pole of frog blastula is prospective endoderm. During the entire process of blastulation, there has been no growth of embryo. In fact, as the cells of the blastula are very small, the blastula looks like the original egg to the naked eye. Until the blastula contains some 4,000 cells, there is no transcription of zygote genes. All the activities up to now have been run by gene products of messenger RNA and the proteins deposited by the mother when she formed the egg. Now let's discuss something about the significance of blastulation of frog. Significance. Association of presumptive organ forming areas by the cells of the blastula. Number two, segregation of presumptive organ forming areas of the future embryonic body into definite parts of the blastula. Dear students, we have completed the discussion of blastulation in frog. And this is a very important phase in the development of frog. So if you have any difficulty or problem, you can contact me to the link given below.